scariest conspiracy theories in the world that will seriously change your life. Part 15. I'm sure by now you are aware that this right here represents all the scariest conspiracy theories in the world. From the least scary to the scariest of the scary. But this today is crazy, like crazy. So, let's go. LeBron James is the one high profile athlete that doesn't really have any blemishes on his career or even his life in general outside of his sport. No criminal convictions, not even a DUI. No cheating or beating on his wife. No gambling addiction. The guy is a family and community man, investing millions of dollars into his hometown and even getting his son Bronny into the league. But this Vogue magazine cover that he did with Tom Brady's ex-wife Giselle is the one stain on his life that I can't believe he allowed to happen. I'm back, Super Boy FITTICD, and today we're going to take a look at these TikTok videos. Let's try to get him into a thousand likes this video. If you guys like the video, make sure to like the video, of course. This video gets crazy, so make sure to watch to the end. If you guys like the chain, check the link down in the description and facts that will blow your mind part 17 new york was once called new amsterdam the word goodbye came from god be with you mexico has the most external debt worldwide recycling a three foot stack of newspaper can save one tree did that just say mexico has the most deaths worldwide why mexico I thought mexico was chill that's cap i think they have the cartel and shit i know this one girl died in mexico for trying to get a bbl here's some random facts that will mess with the way you see the world astronaut means star sailor astro meaning star and not meaning sailor that is such a cool name high heels were originally made for butchers so they wouldn't get blood on the bottom of their shoes the first ever webcam was created to check on a coffee pot just to make sure it didn't like catch on fire in switzerland it's illegal to own just one guinea pig you need at least two or more i think it's because they get depressed if they're alone like i'm not even joking australia is wider than the moon H how does that work the eiffel tower is taller in the summer this is because metal expands when it gets hot right a jiffy is an actual unit of time it's one one thousandth of a second in japan there's over 200 flavors of kit kats uh, i didn't know that there were 200 flavors period queen elizabeth was a trained mechanic in the military that's a baller move though become a mechanic and then a queen like do you know the only letter that doesn't appear in a u.s state name i'll give you like three seconds ready three two one the letter q for all the people that watched the last video we already heard that we already knew that q was the was the top letter can you actually believe this video was taken 66 years ago you're aware that a negro family has moved into levittown yes i heard of that what was your reaction dynamite <laughs> dynamite <laughs> what have you done about it well uh, i guess we just discussed it how do you feel about the Myers moving in? Well, I'm very definitely against it. Before coming to Levittown, did you have any contact with Negroes? Well, I came from a small town where we didn't have any colored people. And at that time, I had, uh, well, I had no feelings either way. But while we were waiting for our house to be built, we lived in Trenton for nine months. And, uh, well, that was my first contact with them both in work and going through colored sections to work. And I was very happy I was moving into an all-white community. Have you ever discussed the Myers at home with your children? Never before in our house was anything mentioned, pro or con, about colored people. Because I feel that they have to uh, be in contact with them to a certain extent. And why should their minds be prejudiced? But since they have moved here, uh, they have heard remarks, and, uh, well, I'm afraid that they are going to dislike the idea. They, they were, uh, they Let's say racism is taught and you're actually not born racist. I can see that because that second girl was like, you know, I've never actually seen or been around anyone black, but the sole fact that they're here now... Uh, you know, I just, I, I just don't know, like, it's weird because I've seen humans do this thing where, like, if one group of people say, hey, that's bad, even if it's not bad, since other people say that it's bad, they'll just automatically jump to the side that everyone is saying it's bad. It's, I forgot, there was a name for it, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's basically like the follower mindset, like, oh, one group of people is saying, stay away from that, so I'm gonna listen to that group of people, even if whatever the thing they're saying, stay away from, 
isn't harmful or isn't gonna do you any bad. She was forced to participate in a government experiment by her own father, and it turned her into a monster. It was called the Abigail Project. It was the 1960s, right after World War II. The government had hired a guy named Albert Wester to work on these experiments in Area 51 to create a freaking super soldier. But because of how secret and dangerous this experiment was, nobody would volunteer. Like, they couldn't find anyone. What does Albert do? He forces his own daughter to be the test subject. But before I tell you the rest of the story, supposedly you can see if your phone is being spied on. All you gotta do is click share, click more, and if you see this, delete it immediately. Now look, Abigail was placed in a closed room all alone. They gave her growth hormones, injected classified substances in her DNA, and even surgically modified her own body when they weren't getting the results they wanted. She started to turn into something that wasn't even human and had primal instincts. Her father, who was ashamed and devastated of what he did, you know, himself and uh went to heaven or not three months later abigail two guards that were supposed to be feeding her and yeah she escaped scariest conspiracy theories in the world that will seriously change your life part 15 I'm sure by now you are aware that this right here represents all the scariest conspiracy theories in the world. From the least scary to the scariest of the scary. This today is crazy, like, crazy. So, let's go. There is also new evidence for this, so if you think you've seen something similar, you haven't because there's new stuff. So, let's do it. So of course, we all know Michael Jackson, of course he tragically died. Or did he? Now to start off with, why do people believe that he is still alive? Well, this is why. To start with, when Michael died, no one was there to actually physically prove it, no one actually saw it. Furthermore, no one actually saw his body as he had a closed funeral, and most people of this nature would normally have an open casket, but he didn't. Next up, someone in the crowd at the funeral looked exactly like Michael, just like he'd slightly changed his face and had some makeup and stuff. And he was actually known for doing this before to change his appearance if he wanted to sneak into places. Crazy. Then a while later, his daughter posted this photo of someone in the background looks like Michael. Like, what the hell? Now, this right here is the big bit, and this is mental. So this is the ambulance that took Michael, and this video was taken after he died. Take a look. There appears to be someone who looks like Michael getting out the back, absolutely. Now we know that is the ambulance that he was in prior to this because it has exactly the same number plate. So, who the hell was that being secretly escorted out of the back after he died? Now this is ridiculous, I don't know what I think of this. So this guy right here is Dave Dave, supposedly one of Michael's best friends, who he never ever spoke about when he was alive. Now many people actually believe that Dave Dave is actually Michael. He's just undergone a lot of surgery again, and completely changed his appearance so he's completely unrecognizable. Now make sure you hit that follow button because the series only gets crazy. Yeah, I've heard about Dave Dave so many times, but in my opinion it doesn't make sense only because of the fact that Michael Jackson faked his death to get out of the public light just to go back in the public light with a different name called Dave Dave doesn't really make sense to me but i do know he used to dress in disguises a lot like a lot of disguises and i heard it never worked so i'm not really too sure if he really did fake his death if you think he faked his death put your thought in the comments most brutal prisons on earth part two located on patek island in russia the patek island prison is a maximum security prison and is home to the country's worst criminals the prison has only about 170 men but each prisoner is kept in a small two-man cell for 22.5 hours a day every day only getting to stand for about an hour and a half because of the near pure isolation, lack of basic facilities, most residents go insane well before their sentence is complete. Situated near Bangkok in Thailand, the Bangkwang Maximum Security Prison is the most violent prison in the country, housing 43 prisoners and death row inmates. Physical abuse is the norm here, and inmates are forced to wear shackles, prisoners suffer from malnutrition, and disease is a big problem as the facility has no running water, a barely functioning sewer system and is severely overcrowded and understaffed yo when the hell did matthew santoro get tasked yo i've seen this man when i was 10 years old bro and now like 10 plus years later i'm just like yo he still looks the same am i bugging like have you guys ever seen matthew santoro like he's been around for a minute i'm just looking at this man like yo he looks exactly the same i feel like once you pass 30 you just don't really look any different until you're like 50 or 60. here's some of the weirdest ways that people have died in human history a 26 year old had been to hospital to hospital trying to figure out how to stop himself from snoring so dang much he eventually came across a man named Mark Gleason who had prescribed to him a little remedy which was to stick two tampons up his nose. 
he suffocated. 32-year-old <laughs> Edward Archibald had actually died in an insect eating contest because he had too many cockroaches and they were still alive and they were clawing up his throat and it clogged his windpipe and he died. All around the world, there are some crazy competitions, including seeing who could sit in the hotter temperature for a longer amount of time. And they did so by sitting in a sauna. And a man was in this competition, and his body overheated and got cooked from the inside out due to the harsh temperatures. There was another guy in the competition too, but he won. He, he's still alive. Make sure to like and follow for more. Love you guys. Top five urban legends that turned out to be real. Chuck E. Cheese animatronics move on their own. Chuck E. Cheese has been long rumored to be haunted by animatronic figures that move on their own, even when the power is off. These tales were often dismissed as mere urban legends meant to spook children. However, in 2019, a former employee's testimony brought an eerie truth to light. The employee recounted how during after-hour maintenance, the animatronics would occasionally shift positions or emit sounds despite being turned down. This phenomenon was actually captured on video showing an animatronic character moving its eyes and mouth when the restaurant was closed. The unsettling footage showed the animatronics' eyes flickering to life and their mouths moving silently. One night, the employee was cleaning when they noticed an animatronic had shifted slightly from its usual position. At first, they thought it was just a trick of the light or a mistake. But then the animatronic's eyes glowed eerily in the darkened room. A soft mechanical whirring sound filled the air and its mouth began to move as if it was speaking. Desperate to prove they weren't imagining things, the employees set up a camera the next night. The footage showed the animatronics moving on their own, their eyes darting around and their mouths opening and closing in the darkness. The video spread among the staff, many of whom have had their own unsettling experiences. Some reported hearing faint childlike laughter when the restaurant was empty while others felt cold spots in the sensation of being watched if you have the guts follow for the next urban legend interesting people you've never heard of this man lives across the street from the most well-known life ending cliff in australia called the gap over 50 years of living there he has prevented around 160 different jumps from people who were contemplating by inviting them into his house for tea this bulgarian man walked up to 25 kilometers or 15 miles per day in the last 20 years of his life asking people to donate for orphanages that could not pay their bills. He passed away in 2018 at 103 years old. Joseph Stalin's son was the team manager for the entire Soviet hockey team in the 1950s. When the entire hockey team perished in a plane crash, Joseph Stalin's son was so nervous about his father's reaction that he just put together a whole other team and his father never knew the difference. Google sent an employee to this abandoned Japanese island to map it for Google Street View. This island at one time was the most densely populated island in the world and is actually the island they used in the movie Skyfall. Creepy last words people said right before dying. A 20 year old gang member was dying of primary liver cancer. In his last days, hours, and moments, he was angry. The family called the hospice nurse into the room and told her that they thought he was going. He wasn't responding, his eyes were glossy, his skin was cold, the end was imminent. His lovely mother whispered to him to go towards the light, to her Jesus. He opened his eyes, looked at her, and said, F your Jesus. A second or two later, he slowly turned his head to the left and got the most horrific look on his face as if he was looking at something that they couldn't see. And horrified, his face contorted and he screamed with his last breath, eyes wide. Oh sh Oh sh Oh no! Then he made a guttural noise and promptly fell back into the bed and died. Every family member was shaking and too frightened to speak. The hospice nurse left the room and took two days off. She said she doesn't care if she never finds out what he saw. Yo, that shocked and terrified the nurse so bad that she literally was like, I need a reset. It was only two days though. If it was like two weeks, that'd have been freaking crazy, bro. Facts that will mess with your perception of time, part one. Woolly mammoths were still around while Egyptians were building the pyramids. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. George Washington never knew dinosaurs existed. The Nintendo Company was founded while Jack the Ripper was still on the loose. Things that are more creepy at night. Schools. Schools at night. Alleyways. Alleyways at night.
Cemeteries. Cemeteries at night. Parking garages. Parking garages at night. The woods. The woods at night. Hospitals. Hospitals at night. A cabin in the woods. A cabin in the woods at night. If all those basic everyday things are really scary at night, imagine what a prison would look like at night. I feel like that would be crazy. Have you heard about the supernatural phenomenon that sometimes happens to people in really bad car wrecks? Well, apparently multiple people who have been in horrible car accidents have reported seeing the same strange thing. It's called the third man syndrome and it's when a supernatural presence offers comfort to a victim during a survival situation. I'm gonna share one of the crazy stories with you now, but if you're interested in this, tonight's episode is gonna be all of these stories. So a few years ago, a Reddit user was in a horrible car wreck, like so bad they cut the car door off to get them out. They black out during the accident, but as they come to, they see a woman open their car door and get into the back seat. And the woman put her hand on the driver's shoulder and told him that it was gonna be okay. And then she said that help was on the way. The user then blacked out again and came to with a fireman cutting off the door of the car. Afterwards, they're with it enough to talk to the police officers and the firemen on the scene. And they're telling them like, hey, there was this woman that got in the car with me, is she okay? And everyone is like, there was no one in the car with you. Apparently no cars passing by had even stopped for the accident because the fire department was so close. So it was super unlikely that anyone had gotten in the car with them. But this is not the only time that that's happened. Other people have reported a woman getting into the car with them after an accident. There's so many other supernatural stories just like this that I explore in the episode tonight. So make sure you're following along. I went swimming with sharks and nearly ended up in the hospital, and not for any reason you'd think. Shout out to Nat Geo for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna change the way you look at sharks in less than 60 seconds. Let's get it. The author of Jaws, Peter Benchley, not only did he regret writing the book because of all the bad PR to sharks, he would dedicate the rest of his life to shark conservation. If Jaws were written today, the shark would be the victim. The Greenland shark is a slow burn glacier guppy that can not only live for up to 400 years, they don't hit baby making age until 150. 150, dude, and still young. Now there's more than 500 types of sharks, so it's easy to miss one. like the cat shark, which happens to glow in the dark that's biofluorescence. The epaulet is a shark that disrespects the natural order by walking using pelvic and pectoral fins to move around during low tide. Sharks use a type of camouflage called countershading, meaning if you're above them, they blend into the dark abyss, but if you're below them, their light underbelly gets lost in the light of the sky. When you've been around longer than trees, nature gives you perks like that, 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 that's Anthony Mackie. It is, and he and Ross Edgeley and many more will be a part of National Geographic Shark Fest airing on Disney Plus and Hulu. Check it out if you're ready to see sharks be anything but the bad guy. Oh, that, that's right. Well, well, I wasn't lying. The sharks were fine, but the ocean slammed me against the bars of the cage like it owed me money. So, moral of the story, I'm not afraid of sharks, just the ocean around it. Terrifying facts about the ocean, let's get into it. So we've explored roughly 5% of the ocean, leaving many things and creatures yet to be discovered. Also, sunlight penetrates about 700 feet into the ocean, and after that, we're in a murky black abyss where we cannot see anything, but many things can still see us. There are about 3 million shipwrecks, with countless human bodies being eaten by many undiscovered and unexplained organisms. So that's terrifying and horrible to think about. Also, there are many unexplained disappearances from ships to planes to people. Also, the pressure at the bottom of the ocean is so immense it equates to 50 jumbo jets being piled on top of us. There are also plenty of terrifying and deadly diseases that eat our flesh while we are still alive in the ocean. Plenty of creatures have just been discovered, including the giant squid and the basking shark. So who knows what other giant and massive and deadly creatures have yet to be discovered. Also, here's a terrifying situation to think about. We cannot swim up out of the ocean very quick or we will die of something called the bends. So imagine being deep down in the ocean and trying to escape but realizing you cannot swim up so you are fucked by whatever creature is chasing you. Also, there are tons of dead bodies.
Here's more money facts that are gonna blow your mind. On Easter Sunday earlier this year, somebody accessed the Garda World cash storage facility in Los Angeles and stole $30 million. This is the largest heist in LA history and nobody even noticed until 24 hours later. A man from China purchased a first class ticket that included a VIP lounge that offered free food. He rescheduled his flight over 300 times to enjoy over 300 free meals. Meals. When he finally canceled his ticket, he did get a full refund. Steve Ballmer is now more rich than his former boss, Bill Gates, making this one of the only times in history where an employee became more rich than their founder. Bill Gates recently booked an entire Michelin-starred restaurant in Barcelona for two days only to order a Diet Coke and return to his plane. The chef had prepared a $313 tasting menu with gourmet dishes like caviar, but Bill Gates stated that his food preferences are simple and prefers burgers and Diet Coke. What's the most dangerous place on Earth? Number eight is Lake Natron in Tanzania. The lake's so alkaline, animals get mummified. Number seven, Morgan Island. Off the coast of South Carolina, 4,000 monkeys all infected with the herpes B virus. Number six is Mexico's giant crystal cave. 1,000 feet underground. The cave is 113 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% humidity. Five, Oyamakan, Russia. It's the coldest town on Earth, reaching minus 50 degrees. Number four, Runnet Island. In the 70s, the U.S. government buried radioactive plutonium. Number three, the K2 Summit, most inhospitable mountain summit in the world. Number two is Snake Island, an island full of thousands of poisonous snakes. It's illegal to go here. Number one is North Sentinel Island, home to the indigenous people who have violently rejected contact with the outside world. So much so, if you even get close, they'll swim out to you and try to kill you. My soul just took a screenshot. What's up, bitch? I did. Oh. 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 Who was in this guy's basement? Can someone explain to me why this woman froze? My first reaction whenever I see a video like that is like, why are you recording her? It's just like, oh wow, we're just recording her and then she froze. Very ironic, right? Facts that could save your life one day. If you're ever somewhere really high like a mountain and feel your hair standing up randomly, don't take any pictures and run as fast as you can to cover. You're about to get hit by lightning strike. Just like these two teens that got hit moments after this picture was taken. If a stranger gets in your car with a weapon and asks you to drive them somewhere, most likely you will have your seatbelt on but they won't. So drive fast enough into something like a lamppost. Not only will the accident cause a crowd but it will also injure the stranger giving you enough time to run away and don't worry about your damaged car your insurance will take care of it and if you're at the beach and you suddenly see the ocean recede don't think twice and get to high grounds you're most likely gonna get hit by a tsunami better safe than sorry and finally if you ever see a bouncing ball on the road while driving slow down safely and look around because the ball is usually followed by a small child trying to get it back you're telling me if someone's trying to rob me and I crash my car into a pole I'll get a whole nother car or my money back so couldn't that be insurance fraud creepy facts about your body you're gonna wish you didn't know when you go down a drop on a roller coaster and you suddenly feel your stomach drop it's not just you feeling nervous what you're feeling are your organs actually moving have you ever noticed that an older person in your life seems to have very long large ears that's because your ears will never stop growing across your lifetime you will spend an average of an entire year just sitting on a toilet when we see brains outside of the human body they usually look pretty solid but your brain while inside your skull while you're alive is actually very soft it's like melted 
butter soft. He's talking about you spend a year in total on the toilet for your throughout your whole life. You should think about how long we spend at stoplights. You'd be surprised the amount of years you've probably stayed at a stoplight for. This is one of the most sickening and disturbing cases I ever covered, and it will make any true crime fan stomach turn. This is the case of Jennifer Dodderty. This case took place in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, which is a relatively small area. Jennifer was 30 years old and was extremely kind and sweet. She loved to dance and she trusted everyone she ever encountered. This is because she had some mental disabilities and this disability even affected her keeping up with her peers in school. And she always got bullied and teased, but she always chose kindness over anything else. She then started going to this community center when she finally thought she met her friends. And these supposed friends were Angela, Peggy, Amber, Melvin, Ricky, and Robert. And you will soon find out why they weren't her friends. These six people all lived together and Angela was 17, who was pregnant with Ricky's baby who was 23 years old. Amber was 20, who was pregnant with Melvin Knight's baby. Peggy was 27 and Robert was 36. Now remember, Jennifer was 30 years old, but due to the mental disability she had, she had the mental capabilities of a 12 to 14 year old person. The six of them and Jennifer hung out for a while, but soon after, Angela became extremely jealous of Jennifer. This is because her boyfriend Ricky would always flirt with Jennifer when they all hung out. So Angela and Amber came up with this whole screwed up plan. On February 10th, 2010, Jennifer was invited to a sleepover with her friends. And before she left, she left a note for her mom that said, Have a great day at work, and I love you very much. Right when Jennifer stepped into the apartment house, she was subjected to 36 hours of extreme hell. The group went through her purse and stole money, gift cards, and her cell phone. They poured liquids into her bag, hit her head with filled soda bottles, cut her hair, painted her face with nail polish, and dumped liquids and spices on her head. They then took turns violently hitting Jennifer with a metal towel rack and crutches. Jennifer was also stripped naked, gagged, and then raped by Melvin. They even forced her to drink cooking oil, nail polish, detergent, different medications, and even urine. And keep in mind, this whole time, Jennifer completely trusted them because she thought that they were all her friends. But they were literally dehumanizing her. They then continued pouring all these things and spices on her head and Jennifer was crying that her eyes hurt and she couldn't see. But they didn't listen and continued pouring. And after they decided they tortured her enough, they took her life. They then tied her up in Christmas lights and forced her to write a fake suicide note, essentially saying that everything that happened to her was self-inflicted. The first line reads, I have not been feeling happy for a while now, and I also feel everybody will be better off without me. Which is just sad because that wasn't the case. Jennifer was extremely loved. Once the note was written, they got a knife and stabbed Jennifer to death. And once they knew she was dead, they tied her up in Christmas lights again, stuffed her body inside a garbage can, and dumped it in the parking lot of a middle school, where her body would be discovered by a truck driver the next day on February 11th. Even though Angela orchestrated the whole thing, she avoided the death penalty because she was 17 and a minor. But she ended up getting life without parole. Melvin got the death sentence. Ricky was also given the death penalty and Peggy, Amber, and Robert were given 30 to 72 years in prison. This case is just so sickening and disturbing and it stuck with me after I read it. And I feel extremely bad for Jennifer and her family. I wish nothing but the worst for those six people who did this to Jennifer. Yeah, nah, that's horrible. I mean... Both of them, two of them got the death penalty, but how are you going to let a 17-year-old girl guide you into doing something stupid like that, bro? Because the other, all of them, I'm pretty sure, were over, like, 20 years old. She said one was, like, 23, the other one was, like, 20. So then why why are you letting a 17-year-old girl tell you, hey, let's hurt this? Come on, bro, use your brain, bro. LeBron James is the one high-profile athlete that doesn't really have any blemishes on his career or even his life in general outside of his sport. No criminal convictions, not even a DUI. No cheating or beating on his wife. No gambling addiction. The guy is a family and community man, investing millions of dollars into his hometown and even getting his son Bronny into the league. But this Vogue magazine cover that he did with Tom Brady's ex-wife Giselle is the one stain on his life that I can't 
can't believe he allowed to happen. To be honest, I can't really blame him for this because he probably just showed up to the photo shoot and posed for the camera, not thinking too much of it. But apparently Vogue or whoever was behind the idea for that cover thought a lot about it because this is what they were trying to have him recreate. This is a 1917 US propaganda ad known as Destroy This Mad Brute. Now it's basically just anti-German propaganda that represents Germany destroying all of Europe. But on face value, it's a crazy looking gorilla holding a white damsel in distress. And Vogue decided to get one of the most, if not the most popular black athletes at the time, have him make this face so he can look all hyped up or mad while holding a white damsel. And I don't put emphasis on white because there's something necessarily wrong with that but the optics just don't look too great, especially with this pose. I mean, it's obvious as day what they were trying to do with this. They put LeBron in the exact same position and had him make the exact same facial expression as the gorilla. And I try my best not to be one of those people who says that everything is a sign of racism, but this just is racism hiding in plain sight. And I feel like Braun should have known better or at least been a little more careful because the pose and the facial expression while holding this woman like this just isn't a good look regardless of if they were trying to recreate that image. I can't blame him too much because at this time in 2008, he was probably just taking the opportunities as they come. But this is still crazy work. Man, LeBron was trying to get a bag, bro. I don't think he really gave a fuck about what all that, all that other shit, bro. LeBron was trying to get a bag. And in terms of Tom Brady's ex-wife, though, I don't know, bro. Uh, I posted about that situation. I think it's my last video. Either my last video or my video before the last video. No, I think it was my video before my last video. Yeah. Tom Brady played that one smart, man. My man's playing chess. But anyways, if you guys like the video, please like the video. Thank y'all for watching. Then we get me to a thousand likes. If you like the chain? Remember, link down in the description. Just wait, that stream is coming soon. Peace out.